And long before ethnic cleansing began in Bosnia, it had already started in Kosovo. Since at least February 1990, Serbian police and paramilitary units have brutally repressed Albanian strikes and protests. The Serbs have closed Albanian schools, courts, and newspapers. 60,000 Serbian army troops have reportedly turned Pristina, Kosovo's capital, into an armed camp. Some 2 million Albanians make up a large majority of Kosovo's population, 85 to 90 percent. Yet they no longer have the right to study or even to have street signs in their own language. And it is our conviction that human rights are indivisible, that the violation of human rights of uh, any group or any individual, for whatever reasons, ethnic, religious, linguistic, cultural, are human rights violations that ought to concern all of us. The most distinguished chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Claiborne Pell of Rhode Island, has arrived, and I would like to uh, call on him first to make whatever observations he would care to do so. Senator Pell. I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your courtesy and hospitality, permitting me to speak and run. But uh, like you, we all have many commitments. I think that Yugoslavia is experiencing a very difficult time. And there is a real prospect, as we all know in this room particularly, that one or more of the republics may end up seceding. In this thing, in this situation, you would think that the last thing the defenders of the unity of Yugoslavia would want to do is to stir up ethnic tension in Serbia which was the core around which, as I understand it, Yugoslavia was built. Yet that's exactly what's happened. The Serbian government, acting with substantial support from the national government, is brutally repressing human and political rights in the autonomous province of Kosovo, which is 90% of the population of which is Albanian. And I can remember myself being there on the shores of Lake Akrid, near the area of Kosovo, and seeing and realizing that the people around me were Albanian. It gives me great pleasure to call on a distinguished former colleague, a most effective uh, former member of the Executive Committee of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, uh, who has uh, fought for human rights uh, on many continents and in many different situations, and who has taken uh, such a prominent leadership role on this issue, uh, the Honorable Joe Diogardi. Mr. Chairman, I see our good colleague, uh, Congressman Hank Brown, there, and I'm wondering whether or not he has other business, and I would be happy to defer to him if he has a statement. I'll be most happy to call on my friend and colleague from Colorado if he would like to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I suspect I will learn a great deal uh, coming after our former colleague, so I will defer. Thank you very much. Uh, it's all yours, uh, Congressman Diogadi. Well, thank you very much, um, Congressman Lantos and Congressman Porter, for all you are doing for oppressed people all over the world. Some of my proudest days in the House of Representatives was as an executive committee member of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus.